Hey, how are ya? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure my headphones are connected here. Sorry, I thought we were the technology. <laughs> ah, yeah. There we go. Oh, I love technology. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So let's dive in. So, hi everyone. Um, joining us today, I'm Mariana Padilla, the founder and CEO of Red Lab Marketing. And thank I thank you all so much for being here for my IG Live series, Entrepreneurship BS Busting, where we get real and gritty uh, about business ownership. And I'm so so excited uh, to be here today with Bev Feldman. Bev, Bev. Uh, sorry, Bev. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your business. Hi, Mariana. Yeah, so I have a business called Your Personal Tech Fairy, and I help other small business owners and solopreneurs with the tech side of their email marketing. So helping them to kind of free up their their time to grow their business without worrying about the tech part of their email marketing. Yeah, awesome. So I love reading your bio, how you went on this, like, backpacking journey before diving into like email marketing that's so amazing so yeah just quick overview of that i want to hear about that yeah so actually i mean this business is relatively new i launched it officially in january but i've been a business owner for about a decade now so when my husband proposed to me in 2010 he said hey what do you think if after we get married we quit our jobs and go backpack or go backpack and i was like i can't do that no, because I'm like, I'm totally the planner type. I always like to know what's coming next. But the, I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? When else am I going to do this? So totally. we did it. We we got married in September of 2011. I had actually told my boss in like January. I'm like, I hate to break the news, but I'm going to go leave the country for a while. So and she was great. So we yeah. left in December of 2011. And of course, right before we left, I decided that was a really great time to open an Etsy shop. Yeah. You, know, you leave the country, yeah. open up an Etsy shop. <laughs> but it was one of those things I, I thought about it. I'd, I, as a kid, loved jewelry making, and I reconnected with this creative side as an adult. And like a lot of crafters, I started accumulating a lot of supplies and I'm like, what am I going to do with all this? And then I stumbled upon Etsy and I'm like, there's a place where you can sell handmade things online. This is amazing. <laughs> so I had opened this Etsy shop. We left and then I came back. I'm trying to figure out what to do next. I'm like, you know what? Why don't I try my hand at being a business owner? Now, this is not something I had ever intended to do. Like, you know, at this before that, I was like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to work in education because I, I actually do have a master's in education. Okay. Um, or work kind of in the human services. That was what I had intended to do. But I realized, you know what, I really want to try this. I knew we knew we were going to try to start having kids soon, and I wanted to have a little more flexibility in my schedule. So I'm like, this will be great. I'll have a business, and I'll be home with my kids, and life will be amazing. Um, and not that I things were bad. Like, things were pretty great, but it's also a lot of work to be yeah. a business owner, and it's a lot of work to raise a tiny human, especially when they don't sleep very much at the beginning. Right. So, 100%. but I, yeah. So I did it. Um, and I, you know, I did this business for many years and, and it's kind of like the whole point of, you know, why we're talking today is that no matter what I did and, you know, I was, I was doing the things I'm learning from people. I'm taking online classes. Like I'm learning all the things and I could not really get it to take off. Like, Sure, my income grew a little bit, like I, my sales increased, but it wasn't like anything to write home about. I mean, at this point, I'm making well below minimum wage doing this. So like, this is not working. So I eventually, and like my heart just wasn't in it for a variety of reasons. And I ended up pivoting that business into a digital business, teaching people jewelry making. And I get, I'm like, you know what? I know all this stuff now about digital, creating digital products and passive income and email marketing. Mm -hmm. I want to totally make this work. And again, I, you know, doing all the right things. And while it's still there and it's like, you know, I, I have a good amount of traffic thanks to Pinterest. Like at this point I spend so little time on it. Um, but again, I could never really get it to grow. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Like I'm doing all the right things and I just couldn't get it to work. And at this point, I'm like, so I just identify so strongly as an entrepreneur. I'm like, well, 
I, I don't want to go back to working a nine to five job. But, I mean, this was still in the middle of the pandemic, so I yeah. think it was still like I'd be going anywhere anyway. Right. right. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but like, I just really wanted the flexibility of working for myself. And I had done some freelance content marketing, but it wasn't something that I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. Like, it was like, okay, I guess I could do this. And then my husband's business partner had hired me to do some work. And part of what he hired me to do was taking a a live challenge that he had did and he had recorded it and he's like I want to turn this into you know like an evergreen funnel and I was like okay well I know enough about email marketing and setting up automations I could totally do it and as I'm working on it I'm like oh this is what I should be doing I could totally help other business owners with their email marketing specifically the tech part of it because like I said, like I can do the writing, but it's not something like there's people out there who are much better writers than I am. And it's not something that I get a ton of joy from. It's not really my zone of genius, but like, I love the tech part. I love, I'm really into convert kit. I love going into it and playing around and getting all the things to fit together and work. And I was like, this is what I'm going to do. So yeah. it, as you, you know, many years to get though to this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. No, I love hearing people's stories of how, um, you know, they get into things. And I think, you know, that's like a one thing I always try to like remind people and even remind myself sometimes too. like, you know, you have these expectations and which is like why I wanted to start this ID live series. What you see on like Instagram is like business is like you, you put your efforts out there in six months, you like have the ball rolling, you're making like six figures, like, and there's something wrong with you. If you're not making six figures mm -hmm. and like, you know, there have been times where I've had like really good months and then there have been like some really crappy months and just like, you know, you have to figure out like what are going to be the things that like you know keep you going while business is like a roller coaster and I think mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that I keep coming back to and like my my fiance Kevin is a serial entrepreneur um specifically he's been in the world of like tech startups for the last like decade 12 plus years but the thing that he, he always reminds me is just like so much of business uh like uh you know business um, success revolves around like expectation management, right? And like mm -hmm. where where your expectations are. And so I think that was like a big reason for wanting to start the show is because like I don't think anybody knows what the expectations of business are, like or what the reality actually is, you know. And and so then yeah. you get into this place of just being like uh, judging yourself against like what you see on Instagram, which as I'm learning more and more of, I'm not sure how much of it is actually true or real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent there with you on that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess a follow-up question to that would be like, if you could call BS on like one thing, one specific thing about business ownership, okay. like what is your biggest pet peeve? <laughs> oh my God. It, it's the, I, I've seen this term being thrown out a lot lately and it's like called bro marketing and it's bro like, yeah. yeah. Oh God. It's and, and not that you have to be a guy to fall into that. It's you know, the sense of like, Oh, like follow my roadmap and you'll be making six or seven figures within like six weeks. And you're sure that sounds great on the surface, but first of all, like, also I hate this idea that to be a successful business owner, you have to be making minimum six figures. Like, why can't you be a successful business owner making five figures? Like, why can't you just make something that you're comfortable with? Like, I don't strive to make six figures. I strive to make like enough that like we're living comfortably, but also so that I have time to hang out with my kids and take off a couple weeks from my business if I want to. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think I also take umbrage around that. And I, I, I think that like, I call it the, the, the race to infinite growth um, is what I call it. And I just like, where has that really gotten us is the other thing too, other than like miserable, depressed, like, and I think it's, it's part of like a larger yeah. cycle of just like, what are we all working for? And this, I don't know, I can that's a soapbox. Yes. I'm going to get <laughs> off the soapbox. <laughs> But I'd love to know, uh, you know, if you had, I don't know if you can boil it down to number one, but like, you know, maybe one to two, like top lessons you've learned in business. Yeah, well, I think it very much plays into this, this idea that even if you see someone is successful on the surface, not to say that they're not, but you don't know what brought them there. There could have been many steps along the way that, of fail of not failure, but like of things that just didn't work out. Like 
this business that I'm in now, it has been much more successful than I ever was with my previous business. But I also have like now a decade under my belt and a much better understanding of how to start and run a business. So it took, you know, like 10 years of learning to get to me, get me where the point I am, gets me to the point where I'm at right now. And I think a lot of businesses like they're that way as well, but you don't see their whole journey necessarily because like this, you know, if we're, our marketing is all beautiful Instagram photos, then <laughs> we're not sharing the full picture of, yeah. of all the, the stepping stones along the way and then how we messed up and how maybe we had a couple businesses that never took off. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I tell clients all the time, like working, working with them. And so I do social media strategy. And one thing I always like remind them is just like, how can you tell the story of the perfectly imperfect people behind the brand? Because people want to see that. Like I feel I, like yeah. anytime I post like lessons learned or like they post something, you know, like we really screwed this one up or just like things like that. Like people want to know they're not alone and just like the human, the humanness of, you know, oh, the yeah. human error, right? And so I think that's, that's so like important to consider and just like, how can you be more authentic? Um, because I think, you know, when people are able to like, uh, connect with those stories and, 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 and whatever, you're going to get way more buy-in to your brand. So I think it's just important not only to be just like talking about the truth so then you don't have people just like burning out like in mass from business ownership because they have these unreal, unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations, but just like, you know, considering that, you know, I think that when you are honest about where you, where you are and just like the struggles and the challenges that it took to be there, I think that, you know, I think that it's good for business also. So I agree. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So I'd love to know, so speaking about failures, because uh, I love talking about failures, because I feel like, it, you know, <laughs> people, failures get such a bad rap, because failure is just really part of the process, right? Like, you doesn't even, like, deserve, yeah. like, such a, a name. Anyway, but what, tell me about a time you failed, and maybe, maybe something you learned from it. Oh, how do I pick just one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Water, water, yeah, water, yeah. Water, whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I guess, so this one that really comes to mind, so having a product-based business, you know, you hear a lot about passive income in general as a business owner. When you are the person that physically creates the thing you're selling, it's, it's nearly impossible to have a passive income. So like, but I was very into like, let me figure out how I can do this. So with my jewelry business, I was, I was very all over the place. Like I got very into blogging. I was blogging like three times a week, but not stuff necessarily related to my business. But one of the things I remember learning was like creating a digital product that you can, that can sell while you sleep. I'm like, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, for myself, I felt because I'd started this business before I became a mom. And then I had this, my baby who's no longer a baby. She's seven and a half now, but at the time realizing how important having this creative time to myself, was to my well-being so i was trying to figure out what's my digital product gonna be i'm like oh i'm gonna like write create a workbook book like a digital book for moms called the busy mom's great guide to creativity and i actually can see it where i'm sitting right now <laughs> um so i spent a lot of time on it and i was like all right i'm gonna like someone i knew was selling some kind of digital product it's a totally different realm but she was like selling it on this website so like I'm gonna do that, do that too. So I have like this vision of I'm gonna create this digital product and it's gonna sell and I'm gonna have this other revenue stream and it's just like totally flopped. I think I sold like a couple copies, one of which was like my mom who purchased it, <laughs> and it was like I don't get it. I did all the things right, um, and then I ended up like working with a. Um, someone who had suggested like a year later, she's like, well, why don't, you know, people sell, are on Amazon. So why don't you sell it on Amazon? So I'm like, okay. So I like hired someone to design a professional cover instead of my like, like photograph that I had like, <laughs> I don't even know if Canva was a thing back then. <laughs> but I like put like an overlay on it. Um, it might've been pick monkey and it was like fine, but it was, but like to hire like a professional to actually create it. And so I did this whole big launch on Amazon and I was like, all right, it's, you know, I'm reading like to get because of the algorithm you want like to have it free for the first couple of days so lots of people buy it. So I went to go like put it live or publish it. And I didn't realize to like do it free, you actually have to do it like 
a couple days in advance because it takes a few days. So it's like launch day and no one can actually get my book free. And I'm like, oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> so it was like all these little missteps along the way. It wasn't anything catastrophic. But again, I never really took off. And so it was just like, uh, you know, like here's this, put all this hopes and dreams into this like passive uh, revenue stream. And I eventually made enough back to at least pay back what I spent for the professionally done cover. And then like every now often, so often I'll still get a thing. But it was just like, I mean, my biggest takeaway from that is, you know, it's, on the one hand, it sucked to like spend all this time and effort, but it was also like, okay, well that didn't work. It's time to move on. Or at least, you know, you can kind of go two ways. Like, you know, just accept the fact that, you know, I tried something that didn't work. Okay. Whatever. Do, do the next thing or like, you know, try to change it up and see, work at it till you can make it work. And I've heard it go both ways for people. And I think if I was really into it, I would have gone the way, like, I'm going to like, keep working on it to like, like it's successful in terms of sales, but it just wasn't really where it made the most sense for me anyway. So I, and I look at everything that has not gone right or the way I wanted to with my business as like learning. And I would not have this business if I hadn't had all those kind of missteps along the way. Like if I hadn't quote unquote wasted my time taking courses on email marketing, then I wouldn't be able to have the business that I have right now. Totally. Yeah, no, totally. I hear all that. And I, I, I love that. Just like that. And it's one of those things like you don't know, <laughs> you don't know until you know. Right. And I think, yeah. you know, I think there is some aspect of just like, um, I, you know, like figuring out along the way, like, what are the things that you actually need to be spending money on? And I think that's a huge challenge for like new business mm -hmm. owners. Like, I mean, I invested like in so many digital tools and I should have just like waited and like, you know, seen if I actually needed it. And then, you know, I didn't because I wanted it to be great and to be perfect. And as my new first business mm -hmm. and that I had to have all the things. And then, you know, ended up punching, you know, flushing a bunch of money down the toilet. But, you know, again, you don't know until you, until you know. I know. <laughs> well, the other thing too, I just, I just love, um, you never know, I guess what a feedback on that is like, you never know when the book, you're like, your, your book is a toy, it's an asset, right? Like it's a lesson learned and you never know when in the future it's going to be like an asset again and the time just might not be now <laughs> it's true well like there was the one day like two years ago I looked at my Amazon account and I'm like someone bought 20 copies of my like the digital version of my book or no it was the physical version I'm like oh my oh, god nice. did someone at a bookstore buy my book like it was just, it was just like I and I had to this day I have no idea who bought it but like sometimes there's those little surprises and it's something at this point I put no effort into advertising yeah. So it's like always a pleasant surprise. I'm like, oh, okay. Made, made like 10 bucks. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's so funny. So um, I would love to know, um, you know, you've been in business like 10 years now. Um, and you might have kind of already talked about like lessons learned, but I would love to know if you could like travel back in time and tell like, you know, newbie entrepreneur self, like what would you, what would be, what would you tell them? What would you tell yourself? Oh my God. I would tell myself, don't go into like a product based business. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else is something similar. So, okay. There's a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and not to say like, not to knock product based businesses. Obviously we live in a world where people sell things. So totally. it just yeah. wasn't like, while I loved, again, I love the creative aspect of it. And from that business, I learned so much. It's just hard. It's really difficult to scale the type of business I had. And it's really hard, I think, to to make a good living off of it. Just, yes, there are people who can, who make a living off of a handmade business. But at least in where I live in the Boston area, a lot of the makers that I've met over the years have had to do something else because it's yeah. just really hard. And the thing is, people, we live in an Amazon world. So people expect really low prices. Yeah. And you can't compete with that as a, as a maker. It's just impossible. You, you will, you can't even like cover the cost of your supplies. I mean, silver is like the, the cheapest metal right now and it's still really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of Etsy when it's something special. I'm all about Etsy. I don't even touch Amazon. So, yes. you know, so you need more <laughs> people like that, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, and they do exist though, but the people who want the Amazon prices, I mean, they're not your, your, 
market anyway. But even still, like, I think people look at handmade stuff as like something special as an investment and not something that they're going to buy on a whim necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so that would be good business advice. So I would love to know the worst business advice you've ever gotten. <laughs> oh, that is really good. I, I'm trying to, I feel like I've really lucked out that I haven't personally received any bad business advice. I still, I mean, I certainly out, see flirting out there things. Um, people suggesting things are like, I don't know about that. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. Well, this isn't advice that I've received, but definitely I think people think it's okay to just like add people to your email list that have not given you your permission, permission to. So I'm sure there, I know I've heard of people being told to just do that. And I'm like, uh, -uh don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think something similar, um, not that ever, anyone's ever told me to do this, but I think anyone, uh, if anyone ever tells you to buy your followers too, that's terrible advice. Yeah. Well, that's very terrible. Yeah. Advice. <laughs> it's the, yeah. It's like, what's the point? Sure. To, I mean, if it's, for it's um, a vanity metric, then sure, ha buy all the followers you want, you want, but it's only going to hurt your business. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so and then I'll get people coming through, you know, I'll get like DMs from people and it's like, I can get you like five to 10 clients and like you have 6,000 followers and you've posted twice. Like, I don't believe anything that you are going to like, no, exactly. sorry. <laughs> like you are not a reliable source of anything yeah but yeah not that yeah it's just so, interesting just interesting to see that um i would love to know you know just uh you know as a as a, as a female women business owner have you encountered any challenges that you think you know were made harder by being like a female business owner i mean i feel very lucky in that regards that i haven't i think the 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 thing though that really comes to mind though is I think in terms of like what to charge yeah I think we as women have been conditioned and socialized to not value our time as much as men and it's I think it's very hard I think it's more I guess again it's not like necessarily anyone like making it hard for me as a woman but just like yeah that societal pressure of like oh like who's should I pay that? Can I really charge that much? Like there's a lot of mindset stuff that like, I think we've internalized as women. Totally. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I actually uh, just had raised my rates uh, like nice. two weeks ago after like, hey. yeah, I was like, you need to raise your rates. Just like three months. He's like, you need to raise your rates. <laughs> like stop complaining about not making enough money. Just like raise your rates. You haven't raised your rates like the entire time you've been in business. Um, and yeah, it like, I felt like I was going to bomb. Like it didn't, I like, it was like, oh, <laughs> like, but you, yeah, I mean, and it's just so interesting because it's like, um, you know, I work, I work with coaches and, and mostly coaches and like uh, course creators, but that was like a topic on for one of them this week too. And like her, her mindset was like, look, if you, you know, you, you don't often like bat your eyes, like, it, like he does, he does, you don't think twice if like your lawyers or your accountants say they're raising your, mm -hmm. their rates, right? Like, it's just like you expect that, like, if you've been working with them for long enough at some point in time, like they're going to raise the rates. Like that's, and, but why would you like it? But it's, it's the same thing, right? With you, right? And just like, if you're not um, raising your rates on your own terms, right, you're essentially letting uh, external forces or like other people decide when you are going to be raising your rates. And then it's just so much harder to have like that balance, right? Which is what we all want when we start our own business. We want that balance. It's so much harder to do that if you're not charging, you know, you're not willing to ch charge your rates, right? Because you're going to be working mm -hmm. all the time. So anyway, yes. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's super hard. Any, any tips on that? I just had to like, uh, yeah, I just had to like warm it up and be like, yep got to do this, but on the old big girl panties. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, like in the few months that I've raised, uh, that I've had my business, I've actually raised it a couple times. And I feel like every time I raise it, and I don't, I haven't yet raised it with like older clients, but every time I introduce it to like a new client, they're like, okay. Yeah. Like yeah. they don't even bat an eye. And I'm like, like, wow, I can actually <laughs> charge that much. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good though? When you're finally trying, you're just like, yes, yes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, all those years I worked in the human services and it's just like, it's just so weird to be, it's just like a whole different ball game oh, yeah. when it comes to salary. Totally. And it's like, I look back at what, 
I remember like my first full-time job after grad school or my first job after grad school, I'd worked full-time before that. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm rolling in the dough. And it was like 20 something non dollars an hour. <laughs> totally. Yeah. But I like my first job was like $8 an hour. I think my first full-time job and like living in the Boston area, which is, I think like historically like the third most expensive city. Like yeah. you can't survive on that. Even yeah. like over a decade ago, it was just ridiculous. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's part of it is raising your rates and just like not, not feeling. And I think part of it is, is this like the people pleasing too. Like how is this person going to feel right? If I like mm -hmm. do this thing again, but you have to like consider your own first need, your, your needs first. But yeah, I, I totally hear you about like the challenges of that, especially, especially for women. So yeah. yeah. But I also, I make it very clear because that's another big thing that actually annoys me is when people don't put their prices on their website. I'm like, what are you trying to hide? Like why? Like, I don't, I want someone to come on a call with me and not be surprised when I tell them what I, what, what I charge. I want them to yeah. like be able to see it there and then decide for themselves. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Or if not, that's fine too. Like, right. Right. Like, and I, but yeah. I don't want people. Yeah, yeah so I don't want someone to come like, on and be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's good because then, you know, like you're not getting like people through the door who can't afford to pay you right and so then you're like I, I I just recently I think in the last like six months put my my rates up on my website um and yeah no it's been good it was a little scary at first but I think it's it's yeah it, it definitely weeded people out but anyway <laughs> awesome well I didn't I did you have any other questions you wanted to, to wrap up with or any other thoughts oh I don't know I, it's funny because I had taken some notes um I will say, because you'd, you know, one of the things we had chatted about, like your biggest piece of business advice. Oh, yeah. And I can't be in the email marketing world without saying, like, everyone should have an email list. And that is, like, one of the most important things I did right from the get go with my other business is, like, I made sure I even, I made sure I always collected email addresses. And I found that even if I did a show and someone didn't buy a piece of jewelry for me, like, after I emailed them a, a number of times, I had people later on buy jewelry for me. So I think it's so important to, even if you're not quite ready to email people, you're not sure what to do it. Like just get that list. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And like funnel people there. Like I think, you know, social media very much like should be leading you then ultimately oh, into yeah. an email. I tell people that all the time. It's like social media strategy is, is like definitely part of the funnel, but it's like uh, you need to be able to like get people off of social media and onto your email list. And if you think about mm -hmm. like your email list, right? Like I can tend to think about it as much warmer leads because like, I like it takes a lot for me to sign up for an email list anymore. Like, oh yeah. So the fact that someone took the time to sign up for your email list says that they're like interested in the products and services that you're providing. Right. And then I exactly. like the other thing too is that like the, uh, the conversion rate on emails is so much higher than social media. Like the chances of someone like converting off of an email that you send versus like seeing you out of the, like out of the cold on social media and like converting just like off of social media are so much lower. Um, I think oh, the yeah. statistics are like three to, is it three to 4% on email? Is that, am I getting that right? And like social media is like 1%. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I think that's right, but I could be wrong. Yeah. I think, I, I think it's not unusual for it to be a little bit lower. Like I, I feel like I've heard typically like if you're having a big launch on something, you can expect like one to 2% to buy. So like, you know, if you're trying to sell a certain amount, you, you kind of do the math and figure out how many people you need on your list. But totally. yeah, I mean, and I love what you said about like people from, coming from social media onto your email list as being a warm lead and that they have made the choice to to sign up for your list. Cause I think sometimes people have this thing when it comes to emailing and they're like, well, I'm going to annoy people if I email them. And so then they don't do it. Forgetting that people made the decision to give us their email address. I'm sorry. I might get like weird lighting in my face. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and then if they do unsubscribe, that's fine too. Like it's right. not a bad thing to have people unsubscribe from your list because there are people that probably weren't going to buy from you anyway. And that's fine. You, you know, it also costs money to have your list. So you don't want to pay for people 
who just aren't ever going to buy from you. Sure, like social media, you're not going to be caught. It doesn't matter if you have like 10 followers or a million followers. It's all the same. But like with your email list, it's, it's good to have people who decide to unsubscribe. Totally. Totally. Yeah. No, I'm tracking you 100% on the email list. I, I it, you know, even though I, I focus like on social media strategy, like it needs to build or something. So yeah, 100%. Like all about the email list. Email list is gold. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Well, it was so nice chatting with you today. Um, Likewise. Yeah. So everyone, if you are in need of, you know, email automations, please check out Bev, your personal tech fairy. Um, she is so lovely. And I had such a great time great. chatting with you today. Thanks so much for having me. Enjoy your day. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.